Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and everything else. I mean, that was a crazy game. That was insane. Uh, I can't remember the scoreline, I'll be honest. Brentford four, won, one. Brentford won, Wolverhampton won to us four. That was insane. I came into this game thinking it was going to be nil-nil, one-nil either side, a scrappy game of football. Well, every single one of those 1,700 travelling fans got their money's worth and then some Liam Keane. Absolutely. I mean, for the neutral, it was a really entertaining game. It was incredibly open, um, back and forth action and the difference was that Wolves were clinical. Yeah. If we're being honest, in the first half, there were two defences that were a little bit shaky. Um, Porous, you would say. Yeah. Brentford more so clearly because of the um, because of the goals, but Wolves were incredibly clinical with their chances. And, and to be honest, they've got Nathan Collins to thank for, for two of the goals. Um, an incredible afternoon. Always, and, and always th- rain, Nathan. Big fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Three, uh, three goals in three minutes. Yeah. Insane. Um, a, 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 Truly incredible spell um, from the 13th minute to the 16th minute in that first half. Um, and Wolves, thank God, restored their 2 0 lead before half time with, with another Wang goal. And, and from then, really, in the second half, it, was, it wasn't a great watch. Um, Brentford had control, but Wolves were really organised, defended quite well, um, saw the game out really nicely, and then another uh, Collins error, as I say, handed them a fourth. Uh, look, Mario Lamina is probably not just in the form of his Wolves career, probably in the form of his, of his life, yeah. to be honest, at this yeah. moment in time. He was all over yet again, another man of the match performance. Super. He was right up there, all over the place, and <coughs> scoring again, another another great goal. Pablo Sarabia, by the way, I thought I had a tired, I think, second half, yeah. which you can understand, but first half, sensational, was, by the way. Magnificent Probably his best yeah. 45 minutes in the Wolves' that, that cross for the Lamina goal Oh, my is, God, sexy. He's perfect. Incredible. Um, that's the kind of left-footed delivery you want to see from him. It yeah. was absolutely perfect. Bang on the money, and Lamina, right place, right time for a great header. Yeah, and look, Wang Hee Chan, I mean, 10, 10 Premier League goals this season. I know yeah. he came off, for the, and we'll find out how he is, I'm sure, he'll speak yeah. to Gary Neal in a bit but just on the positive side I mean this this guy I mean, he's had a new contract he's, he's in an absolutely incredible season yeah I mean the first goal is a gift but it's only a gift if he's there exactly it's only exactly. a gift if he he's anticipates looking for it, it. He absolutely anti- he anticipates it he's quick yeah. he's calm he's very neat with his first touch takes it on the goalkeeper easily and um, basically walks it into the net the second one uh, his second rather Wolves his third is a really bizarre goal where Collins is, has lifted a long ball forward I don't think he's at fault for it but it is a bit of a hopeful ball forward yeah. and it, it, as soon as it comes through Totti wins the header it's a, it, it's a good header wins it you know, as he should do but there's no way that Brentford's defence should be no, split no. open the way it is by one header um, from basically past the halfway line um, comes all the way through and Huang is incredibly calm and composed to take that down just ding get over the Amazing. defender and pot, pot, um, just pot it in the bottom corner. It, it was superb. Um, All right, let's go! Were, cheers, were, cheers, mate. <laughs> good timing. Wolves were good value for what was a remarkably good three points. Um, for all the goals in the first half, I actually thought that this game and the better half from Wolves was the second half. I thought they yeah. closed that game out superbly. Professional's the word, I think. Absolutely yeah. brilliantly. You know, they had Brentford. Okay, the first five ten minutes they threatened as you would expect. You know, they probably got an absolute rocket at half time. But after that, Wolves were pretty good in possession. And um, Bellegarde, I mean, they won the half one nil. And at the same time, this is against the Brentford side who have rested for ten yeah. days, and yet Wolves were the stronger finishing that game. All respect to these players, and especially. Gary O'Neill, they've done the homework, they've done a number one Brentford, and this is a superb result. I mean, coming into this game, Brentford at home had, from nine games, three wins, three draws, three losses. They're fairly decent at yeah. home. They've got a lot of injuries, but I think they're a good side. I think they've got a good manager. This is not an easy place to come no. and win and score goals, and the manner in which Wolves mm. went about it was really impressive. But I completely agree with that second half. It wasn't exciting, but it didn't have to be. No. Wolves, Wolves were 3-1 up, and they looked after the that ball. That was so impressive. Nicely when they had to. Yeah. Yes, they were a little bit route one. Yes, they were a little bit last ditch defending at times, but they were solid, they were compact, they were organized, they were professional, and I thought it was really impressive. And then to, as I say, it's, it's another howler from Collins to give Cunha the ball, but Cunha, to have the intelligence yeah. to carry it forward and play the pass at the perfect time was really impressive. And Bellegarde gets a, a pretty easy finish, but he had to be there to do it. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Cunha there. Actually, that was the, my final final four that I thought Cunha even battled hard. Yeah. And he didn't have great chances all night, but hit the post, frustrated, yeah. wanted to take on players, I thought. But also, in that double pivot role that maybe he's been a little bit more advanced recently, he had to <coughs> withdraw himself a little bit today. And I thought he was superb with then, like you say, laying it on play for Bellegarde at the end. A flawless display again from the Brazilian. Yeah, look, as you say before that, Bellegarde our goal as well he hit the post obviously had that good opportunity um i really like him i really do it's not just what he brings to the the club and the dressing room because i mean 
interviewed him a few times, I've been around him, I've spoke to people about him. He's someone that is so full of energy, he's, he's a live wire, people really like being around him. He absolutely adores being at this football club, which, no offence to Wolverhampton, sounds strange when he's Brazilian and he's come from Madrid, and he's come over to Wolverhampton and he absolutely adores it. And then you see the kind of performances he puts in. Yes, occasionally he's frustrating, occasionally he's, he's a bit anonymous within games. Recently, That's a lot of struggles. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, recently he's been brilliant, but occasionally that does happen. But even when that does happen, it's always a 10 out of 10 for effort, which is the minimum you, you ask for, and you know you're going to get it from him. I mean, he, he did it again today, as you say, quite quiet at times within the game, but at times when it mattered, he puts in one hell of a shift. And he looked knackered, but he does not stop. Um, and then, obviously, the Bellegarde's goal is a great assist from him, but the chance where he hit the post, he was aggressive. He picked the ball up, he took Ethan Pinnock on, and he created a chance out of virtually nothing. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a big fan of him. I think he's a really good player. I think once, once Wolves get a number nine that Gary Neal wants to start every week, and you play him off that, that could be exciting. Um, look, they're pushing the top 10 here, and I think Chelsea last minute goal, so Chelsea 10th, Wolves are 11th, but at the same time, you look at this team, and you look at the togetherness yeah. in this group of players. They're playing for each other, they're playing for the managers, they're playing for the fans, yeah. and you know, you can't rule this team out of anything at this moment in time. They've got togetherness there, like you say, January around the corner, this team are going to be an exciting place for certain new recruits, and I think Gary Neal will have an easier job than maybe what and Matt Hobbs than what they thought five, six months ago. Uh, and this team are going places, and it, this has been a joy to watch now. It's been thrilling. It's been a lot of work for you. <laughs> it's been a lot of work. But um, are, you, are you excited going into into January? I am. I am. Look, Wolves have got to be cautious. Wolves are not in a position to to spend recklessly in January. A couple of outgoings might you know, give them a bit more leeway, and they've got a little bit of wiggle room as it is. Um, a striker's top of the list, we, we've known that for a long time, Gary Neal said it publicly now. A winger or forward players along that front line, again, is probably the, the, the next option. Um, so we know what Wolves want. They should get what they want because, albeit it's difficult to do, um, they should have enough wiggle room to make some, some things happen. And they do need it, they need a little bit of depth, they need a little bit of added impetus to this, to this side. But I, I've said it almost every game recently, I think I said it after the Chelsea game, I'm going to say it again. This is a side that June Lopetegui publicly said, slated, was not good enough to compete in the Premier League this season. And at the time, mm. you can sort of understand why he was saying that. They had a lot of players go, they weren't bringing players in, he was frustrated, so I understand it. It's not a criticism of him, but it is a positive and a praise for Gary O'Neill to come in and pick up that exact side. Obviously, Nunes goes, a couple come in, but pretty much that exact side. Well, maybe you could argue and a weaker side yeah, with Nunes that, going. That's a fair point. And galvanise them to this point where they are on the brink of 10th and they are coming here, a difficult place to come, and putting four goals past Brentford tonight. Um, same as you, did not call this on the drive down today. But this is a side that you can't rule out in any game at the moment, and they will go on bad runs again. Mm -hmm but I have every confidence this is a team that will turn those bad ones around every single time. Right now they're playing for Gary Neal, they're playing for the fans, and that is credit to Gary Neal himself. They've got a steward coming now, so it's going to be a bit awkward with this sign-off, but I just want to, and he also is a bit older, don't I? Give him a heart attack. Can I do it? Um, maybe wait. Yeah, have you got, have you got 10 I'll seconds? He's, he's on the old... Uh, Brentford 1, Wolverhampton 1 goes 4. For all the post-match reaction, make sure you log on to Express and Star. Hadokan! <laughs>